So let me show you what I've got going on today. I've got two different types of bearings here. I've got these white ones, which are zealous ceramic bearings, and these are brand new, and they have a high performance skate oil in them with all sorts of cool friction modifiers so that it's, it's super low friction compounds that coat the metal and give it a really low coefficient of friction surfaces and all sorts of fun stuff to make these really high performance bearings. And I've got these, which are about three year old zealous bearings as well. Uh, but I've washed out the grease that's in them and I've put my own uh, grease that I use, which is a thick defensive grease that's really waterproof and, sh and its uh, emphasis is nice on performance and more for protecting your bearings as well as possible. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting them on my electric longboard and I'm going to be using the capacity of the battery to measure the efficiency of each of these bearing options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these greased bearings in the wheels first and then I'm going to run uh, laps on a track until the board dies. And it's just been freshly recharged. And I'll count the laps and on the remote, uh, the remote's got an odometer on it, but I'll be able to use the remote for measuring the distance and I'll be able to count laps as well. And hopefully this doesn't take too long, uh, but I'll be able to, to compare how efficient these are to how efficient these are. And my hypothesis is that there won't be a very large difference. Uh, um, I don't think that the amount of drag in bearings amounts to very much at all. And so my argument has been for a long time that you don't need to have a, a, a high speed race oils. What you should be focusing on is defensive grease, which is why this is what I use. So, um, I had some challenges to that idea, so I wanted to put it to the test. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to head out, switch out these bearings, and I'm going to go to the track and we're going to count laps and see how far I'm able to go. So let's get started. All right. So I just did 9.1 kilometers on this thing with the greased bearings and i forgot to mention um i just need, i just use cruise control the whole time full speed uh, that with a target speed of about 18 miles an hour and i wasn't able to do the track with laps because the condition of it was so poor it was just too bumpy and too irregular so i did i did track or i did a loop a loop around my usual route it's about two uh two blocks and I have the right of way except for one intersection. Um, so I'm not, I don't need to stop except for that one spot where I slow down and check the traffic. Um, so it should be really consistent. And uh, so I guess I just gotta switch it out. Uh, it'll take about three hours to charge. Um, the stretches, the long stretches of the two blocks are relatively flat and the short stretch is uphill on one side and downhill on the other. And the spot where the battery died is um, right where I started, basically. Uh, and it was on the flat. So um, each lap ended up being just barely over a kilometer, which ended up working nicely. So it helped me count accurately. But yeah, 9.1 kilometers, and I took a picture of where I, where I ended up stopping. So I'll be able to compare really accurately the differences. So let's get this charged up and I'll probably have to try again tomorrow because it looks like rain. So we're back inside because I discovered a slight issue. I brought the board in, hung it up, plugged in the charger, and there's fuel in the wheels, and one of them felt a little off. 
So I opened it up, looked inside, and long story short, one of the balls and one of the bearings was rolling, or it wasn't rolling, it was sliding. And that's because it's got some bad pitting from rust. So let's see if I can get a show you that. Zoom in enough to see it. All right, so hopefully you can see the pitting on this. It's just like in a line right across there. And I can even catch the pin in it. So that pitting is enough to cause a bearing to eventually catastrophically fail. So what it does is that's, that's large enough, just barely, to stop the, bear, the ball from rolling and cause it to slide instead, which is exactly what was happening. And if it slides for long enough, you'll eventually wear in a flat spot, just like you'll wear a flat spot on your wheel. And the bigger the flat spot is, the, more, the less and less likely it, that it'll ever roll again. As the flat spot gets bigger, you have more drag from sliding, and you have more heat buildup. And what will happen is if this causes the bearing to heat up too much, it can cause the whole thing to bind and lock up and basically explode. Or it can cause it to heat up so much that it melts into your wheel and your wheel core. And, and anyway, bad things happen. And that's all, that, just that tiny bit of, of pitting. And that pitting is actually pretty deep. That's pretty significant pitting. Um, but yeah, that's enough to, to cause your bearing to fail. And for whatever reason, this is the only ball that has any signs of pitting at all. So we're just, we're just unlucky here. We just got one ball that got pitting and uh, it basically ruined the whole bearing. Um, I'll be able to swap it out for a better ball uh, from a different bearing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, basically that, that ruined the bearing. So hopefully this didn't affect the experiment too much. I'm going to go ahead and proceed as if everything's all right. And I'll move on to the, the ceramic bearing test. And um, if things look really off, then I might consider redoing this one after. But for now, it's, uh, it's full steam ahead. So this is where I stopped. I was just coming around the corner from the this straightaway, and it was just barely starting to go uphill, and it died at 9.2 kilometers. And remember, last time it was 9.1, so where it stopped last time is just up here. Is where I stopped with the grease bearings. So, not very far. So I got some statistics from that last run. I forgot to get my my app going for the first run, but I do have it for this run. So my maximum speed was 19.1 miles an hour, and that was on the downhill. The average speed was 14.7. The distance was uh, 5.3 miles, according to the app, but uh, I think what's going to be more accurate and more consistent to compare for a test is going to be the uh, odometer, which said 9.1 and 9.2. Elevation doesn't matter, but yeah, the uh, duration was 21 minutes and 30 seconds, which was a long time. Right, so in the end, the performance between the two bearings ended up being very similar. Within, I think, about 250 feet of each other, which ends up being about 0.8% uh, of a performance difference. So very, very small difference, 
between the two bearings. And we know one should be a lot better than the other, and the difference, or the reason why there wasn't more of a difference, was, uh, was basically because so many other factors have a much bigger effect than the bearings. So, for instance, today, it's about the same temperature outside, almost exactly, but it's less overcast and, and more sunny. So the road temperature is warmer. So the wheels would have gotten hotter, which means that there's gonna be more rolling drag today than there was yesterday. So perhaps because of that small reason, uh, if it wasn't for that, maybe the ceramic would have done better. But um, also the wind could have been just slightly different today. Um, wind can make a huge difference even if there's just a tiny bit of it. So there's things I could do as well that could make the difference between the two bearings a lot larger. For instance, when I did this test, I ran the board as fast as I could possibly run it. And, you know, that meant that air resistance was playing a lot larger role than it would if I was going really slow. So I, w I wanted air resistance to be playing a role, so I wanted to go fast, but I also wanted to go fast because that would drain the battery the fastest. I didn't, if I went slow, I, this would be like a 60 minute test for each one. But for instance, the, uh, conditions where you're going slow and you're just coasting and there's not gonna be any air resistance, that's the kind of situation where you will see a difference in performance between these two bearings. So for instance, if you're doing long distance pushing, where you're traveling at a slow speed, and air resistance isn't playing as big of a factor, then then bearings are gonna be providing a much bigger role. If you're at a skate park and you're just coasting across flats, there's virtually no air resistance, and so bearings can, uh, roll speed can play a noticeable role. Um, another thing is, if roll efficiency is what you're after, your first thing is gonna be to look probably at the wheels, because the roll resistance of wheels is, that's where it's at. The amount of drag you get from rolling is way, way bigger than the difference you're gonna get between bearings. I mentioned that the test could have been affected by the temperature of the road, and it, that can actually be pretty big of a difference. Um, you know, the durometer of your wheels, just go up a durometer or two, and your roll efficiency is gonna be a lot higher. The rebound of your wheels is gonna affect your roll, your roll resistance, and also your contact patch. So lots of lots of things go into how efficient uh, your rolling is, and just the bearings, they just play such a small part. So it's hard, the, the applications where they make a difference is, is just pretty small situational instances for the most part. So in conclusion, um, I'd like to say, use grease for your bearings. Do not worry about high efficiency, low drag race oils, unless you're going slow, which seems counterintuitive. If there's no air drag that you're worrying about that's gonna bottleneck the whole thing, then it doesn't make a difference. So if you're doing low speed stuff where the air drag is not playing a role, then, then you might notice it. When you're going fast, the air drag is just such a huge factor, such a huge bottleneck, basically means the bearings make no difference. So if you're going fast, if you're going above 15 um, or 20 especially, or you know, if you're doing downhill at like 30, 40, um, you should not be worrying at all, at all about the roll drag in your bearings. You should be worrying about their health and how long they last and making sure that they're not gonna seize and get pitted and they're protected well. So you wanna use a nice defensive thick grease that's designed uh, to do that job and not an oil 
that's designed just to roll fast. So hopefully this was informative and enlightening, and hopefully you learned something. So there you go, longboard technology, over and out.